In this video, we're going to talk about framework adjustment. But before we get to adjusting the framework, there are a few things that we have to go over, a few things to be careful of, and a few things to check. Be careful not to remove and replace your framework repeatedly on your master cast. Should you need to remake the framework, you don't want to have a cast that's abraded or damaged. Begin by making sure that your rest seats and other components of the removable partial denture framework are fitting intimately against the cast, like you see here. If you see any space between the rest and the master cast as you do here, or between any other part of the metal framework and the cast, there is a chance that your framework has been distorted or miscast and it will need to be remade. In the mandible, there should be relief space between the major connector and the tissue, but it should not be excessive. Proximal plates should be tight against the teeth, components should be of the right proportions, and the finish lines for acrylic butt joints up against the major connector should be sharp. The superior margin of a lingual plate should be tight against the teeth and should finish at the interproximal contacts of the teeth. Components such as eye bars should be properly formed and of proper proportions. It should not be formed like an L bar with two bends in the bar. Make sure that all components are properly finished. They should be smooth and shiny, should be not rough or pitted. Here's a proximal plate that has a miscast and actually has a hole in it. We're going to look at three types of disclosing media for adjusting frameworks. We're going to begin with a silicone media, which provides a three-dimensional analysis of the misfit of the framework. We're using fit checker in an automix gun. You want to apply the material so that it covers any of the parts of the metal framework that contact the abutment teeth. You want to make sure that there are no gaps in the media as you apply it to those parts of the framework that will contact the teeth. Here's a close-up to show how we apply the material. We don't want to leave any bubbles on the metal or any areas that are uncovered. When seating the framework, apply pressure directly over the rest seats or in between the abutments on a toothborn modification space. Allow the silicone medium to set interorally for one to two minutes, then remove. You will find that if you have any burn through, it will show through as a dark spot or a very shiny silver spot through the material. A common place is the junction between the rest and the proximal plate. Once you've found one of these areas where the framework is impinging upon the abutment and not allowing it to fully seat, mark it with a permanent marker, such as a Sharpie, or use a wetted end of a colored pencil. Once you've marked the area you need to adjust, use one of a number of different diamond burrs in a high-speed handpiece to adjust the framework. The silicone medium will not distort after it's set but it can tear when you're making your adjustments. That's why we mark the area of burn through with some sort of marker before we start to, to adjust. You may find that the silicone becomes ragged or in some cases it may actually fly off of the framework. If you've marked through the indicating medium, you'll still be able to see where you need to adjust. When adjusted properly, you won't see any areas of shiny metal showing through, just a thin, whitish, milky, grayish appearance to the framework. If seated before they begin developing some viscosity, the silicone media can be used for checking for the fit of the framework against soft tissues. Here we see an area in the postpalatal seal area where the beading has impinging on the soft tissues below. Alternatively, Pressure indicating paste, a non-setting type of media, can be applied to these areas of the maxillary major connector where it contacts the soft tissue. When placing it on the framework, make sure to apply a thin layer, but to make sure that the medium is mostly white when you apply it. There should be streaks in the material, so when it contacts the tissue, if there is contact, the streaks are obliterated. For adjusting broad areas of the framework, such as the major connector, use the framework adjustment kit, which includes three burrs and one polishing point. When adjusting the framework with these large metal cutting burrs, keep the burr moving at all times. Do not stop in any one position while the burr is still in motion. Otherwise, you will end up with chatter marks on the metal. So keep it moving, keep things smooth. 
When the adjustment is complete, use the polishing point to return the framework to a smooth surface and a high luster. If you've adjusted the direct retainers, you'll find the tip of the polishing point is useful in these areas. Silicone disclosing media provide you a three-dimensional view of how the framework is fitting. They set quickly, they don't distort, they're easy to clean up. However, they're the most costly medium, they can tear or dislodge from the framework, and they take longer to set than many of the other media that we will use. Disclosing wax also provides a three-dimensional visualization of how the framework fits. It sets almost immediately after it's applied, and it's relatively easy to clean up. However, it can distort easily and is sometimes not as easy to read as the silicone medium that we looked at previously. Remove some disclosing wax from its container and set the container aside. Heat up your number 7 spatula in a Bunsen burner or using your butane torch. Heat the spatula just hot enough to melt the wax and then use the number 7 up a spatula to apply an even coating to all components of the framework that will be in contact with the abutment teeth. This media cannot be used on areas in contact with soft tissue because it's much too viscous to be reliable. Make sure that you coat every surface and that there is no silver showing through. The material will set almost immediately and be ready for placement interorally. Seat the framework interorally using pressure directly over top of the rests. To make the wax easier to read, you may find it useful to clean up the excess that squeezes out around the metal components touching the abutment teeth. Then remove the framework and inspect the wax for any areas where the metal shows through. The junction of the rest to the proximal plate is a common area that causes the framework to bind and misfit. Disclosing wax can be removed easily from the framework using some gauze and subsequently heating up the framework and using air spray to blow the remnants off. The last indicating medium we'll look at is an aerosol, occlude. It allows two-dimensional visualization. It only shows you where the framework is misfitting. It doesn't tell you by how much. The aerosols are very quick to apply. Conversely, they take much longer to clean off. When you spray them on, you want a very, very thin coating. You do not want a thick layer at all. Here's some close-ups showing a very thin layer with all areas covered. Prior to seating interorally, it's critical that all the teeth and mucosa be extremely dry. Seat it properly, again over the rest seats. Don't place pressure on the distal extension base. Instead, make sure the pressure is placed on the rest seat and not the grid work. Pressure on the grid work will cause tilting and torquing of the framework. Interferences or areas causing binding will show up again very shiny and silver through the pigment. Here's what it looks like at the junction of the rest seat and the proximal plate. Use high-speed diamond burrs to adjust those areas that are binding or impinging on the hard tissues. One of the problems of aerosols is they're messy. They tend to transfer to the teeth. If they get wet, the pigment gets all over, and they're difficult to remove from the framework itself. In a private practice setting, one of the easiest ways to remove these pigments is to purchase an inexpensive steamer. They're worth their cost for cleaning these prostheses and others, like crowns and bridges and veneers. When the framework is fitting well, you'll need to check the occlusion, but you'll find that articulating paper does not mark very well on the highly polished metal framework. You can see here it's very difficult to assess or identify the markings on the framework. If you remove the high luster from the framework using a polishing point, you'll find that the articulating paper marks much better. Here's the same marking on the same framework after the high polish has been removed. You'll see that the articulating paper has marked much better. Use a high-speed diamond to remove any occlusal prematurity until you see the occlusion is correct. Make sure not to reduce any occlusal rest seats or any other elements thinner than 1.5 millimeters. Then polish any adjustments using a carborundum polishing point followed by a brownie and a greenie. You'll find those points 
in the gold polishing kits. Watch also for areas where the frame may be interfering with opposing occlusion on natural tooth surfaces. These areas can be difficult to, to identify, and sometimes the marks are in areas you would not suspect or look for in order to adjust the framework. Ensure as well that there are no areas where the frameworks from opposing frameworks might be interfering with each other. When assessing the occlusion, it's acceptable to have contacts on framework elements as long as there are contacts on natural teeth as well. If you don't have those, you need to make adjustments so that you re-establish contacts on the natural dentition. You shouldn't change the vertical dimension with the framework in place. Normally, retentive clasps are not adjusted until the partial denture is delivered. When clasps do need to be adjusted, we use the three-prong orthodontic pliers. These pliers allow you to make a bend just by squeezing. Clasps should be adjusted very carefully. You don't want to use excessive force because if you exceed the proportional limit, you could fracture the clasp. So when you're using the three-prong pliers, use it as if you're doing an isometric exercise. In other words, you shouldn't see the clasp actually move a whole lot. The three beaked orthodontic pliers can be used in one of two ways. One is to actually use the clasp the way it's designed, to squeeze between the beaks. The single beak side should be placed internal to the clasp, and the two beak side should be on the external surface. Squeeze ever so slightly so that you can feel the clasp just moving ever so slightly, but so that you don't see so much of a bend in the clasp. The other way is to grasp the clasp with those three beaks and twist the whole thing a little bit. Again, you don't want to see a whole lot of the clasp moving. You should feel some force. You can always go back and increase the adjustment later. When you've finished adjusting your removable partial denture framework, you should find that it seats completely and in seating it in the patient's mouth it should glide into place. It should not feel like it's scraping against the tooth, it should not bind and it should not snap abruptly into place. The partial denture framework should feel comfortable, there should be no feeling of wedging, the occlusion should be good. The patient's existing vertical dimension should remain unchanged.